Hey guys, what's up? Um, just a few concepts I've got to get across to you face to face or a computer to iPhone, whatever it is. So a lot of people kind of want to discredit astrology because of the Gregorian calendar itself um, and Pope Gregory establishing it, you know, um, and it being part of the Roman Catholic Church, but it's not. Okay. Yes, July is from Julius. Yes, August is from Augustus Caesar, Julius Caesar. Um, so, I mean, just because the names of the months are pagan and all that, all that stuff, uh, it doesn't mean the stars and astrology itself is part of that same evil system. It's not. It's 100% prior to that, as we've shown many times. I mean, the Greeks might call it Leo and Aquarius and all this stuff, but the names we use today are, are just Western names, okay? However, 2,000 years ago, in the Bible, Mark 14, 13, Jesus talks about a man bearing a pitcher of water. Okay, so he didn't say Aquarius, but he used the symbology of it. Okay, and the um, beast and Yahweh are the lion, the leopard, and the bear. Well, and they're run by the beast dragon, Satan. Um, well, Ursa Major is the bear. Leo Minor is the leopard. Leo is the lion, run by Draco, the dragon. Okay, so they're not using our Western names, but they're been, they've been there since antiquity. Okay, Hamlet's Mill talks about how one of the main points of all mythology is actually the procession of the equinox, and we're just too modern to understand these symbols. Um, okay, and speaking of that, of, of, you know, Jehovah and stuff, and Yahweh, I mean, <laughs> pretty much 99% of most Bible contradictions are explained with this conspiracy theory, okay? You see, I'm looking at there, but I guess I should look at the camera up here. Um, so yeah, it's it's 100% explained. Hosea 13 says, God is the lion, the leopard, and the bear. Revelation 13 says, the beast is a lion, the leopard, and the bear. And Daniel says, the beast is a lion, and the leopard, and the bear. So why does Hosea all of a sudden say God? And it's in the Septuagint, it's in the Tanakh, the Hebrew um, Masoretic text. It's not some KJV conspiracy. It's, it's what the, the scripture says. Okay, so all the evil in Numbers 20, uh, 31 and Deuteronomy 28, that's not God. That's not the loving Jesus um, Father who is perfect. And, and I'll, I'll, I would read a lot that like God is a jealous God in the Old Testament. Like, why would God be jealous? That's, that's a very human, weak emotion, okay? Um, sorry, I just showered. My hair's all fuzzy and gray. So yeah, no, God is, you know, and they say, the New Testament says no one has seen God. The Old Testament says, yeah, we saw God. He was up on a mountain, you know? That doesn't make sense. All contradictions in the Bible are explained. If Yahweh is the beast and the Elohim is the true God of the universe, not the creator of Babylon, Yahweh. And um, again, with my um, astrological diction, predict, diction, my astrological prediction of COVID in December of 2017, I said December 2019, something's going to happen. I never make astrological predictions. That was the first time I did, and that's what happened. That's the exact uh, month, basically, when Blade Runner was set, November 2019, okay? I, I thought it was weird because I got super into Blade Runner again because, you know, I grew up with it. But as I was older, I understood it more. Watched it like every day almost for a month. Okay. Got the books and comic books, whatever. Um, but anyway, I found it also interesting that Sid Mead passed away December 2019. Okay. When Blade Runner, the, the film he is best known to have contributed to, um, was, you know, set. Okay. So Sid Mead passes... The exact month that I predict COVID would happen, and that's the exact month Blade Runner that Sidney was introduced to, or to the world as, you know, occurred. Okay, he's the primary artistic style for Blade Runner, and of course the heavy metal comics. I just thought it was weird. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and the whole Chris Rock uh, Will Smith thing. I know I'm late. I don't. I just don't give a fuck. I, I don't like violence, I thought it was inappropriate, blah, 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 but it's all symbolic, okay? I try not to hold these celebrities too accountable for their own actions because they are puppets of Satan, okay? The, as the Brocks mentioned, you know, Will Smith 
who's in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, okay? And what is Satan? He's the prince of the power of the air. That's what the Bible says, okay? And, and Smith, as we know, like Agent Smith in The Matrix, there's a verse that talks about the Smith comes bearing the coals of fire, you know? He's basically the beast. So that Smith word is tied to, um, you know, the kind of hive reptilian mind mentality and that's why the agent smiths were all cloning each other because they're all part of one hive mind consciousness um and so when will smith hits chris christ chris rock christ is the cornerstone okay chris rock christ rock christ is the rock the cornerstone the smith you know attacks jesus that's that's his you know mo so anyway will smith the prince of the power of the air Smith, um, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, attacks Christ Rock, the cornerstone. Okay, I, it's just, it's all, it's all symbolic with their names. It's all planned. <laughs> Will Smith wouldn't lose his temper like that. He's a puppet. So I still, that's not a reason to. Anyway, let's go back to scripture. Where does it say Jesus had a beard? Okay, I mean, I just literally, people are like, well, there's Jesus. It was the Middle East, so he must have had a beard. Where does it say he had a beard? I go by strip scripture. Now, where does it say he had long hair? In fact, Paul talks about not having long hair. But then again, Paul, some of his messages are weird, so I guess I won't take that as, you know, I'll take it with a grain of salt. But anyway, I just I just don't like this image that we have of Jesus, some white guy, white blonde hair, blue eyed with beard. And, and I don't like that image of him. I don't like, I, I don't connect with that. Now, a cane, A-K-A-I-N-E, that girl, when she was a kid, she drew images of Jesus, and that looked a little more like a, a Middle Eastern Jesus to me. So when I picture Jesus, that's who I usually picture. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but yeah, she's a girl, and she had these visions, pyramids and space and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, her image of Jesus is what I most connect with personally. I was going to talk about Baconian stuff. Uh, but I'll save that for another one because it's just so obvious that Shakespeare is Francis Bacon. Okay, one last thing. If reincarnation exists, which I do believe, that means we could have been people who we know about or even famous people in the past, right? Obviously. So what that means is a lot of people are like, man, when I go to heaven, I get to talk to Einstein or I get to talk to Nietzsche or I get to talk to... Quetzalcoatl or whoever what if you are a reincarnation of that figure so when you go to heaven you're like I'm talking to myself because I was already here you know what I mean so that's my point that's my trippy question if reincarnation exists and you want to talk to someone you you really connected with in the past but you were that person in the past reincarnated who are you gonna talk to in heaven whoa anyway no one's ever asked that so I've that just came to me and so I was like hey what if you know because uh, journey of souls by Michael Newton amazing book about past life regression he, taught, he describes heaven describes the afterlife corresponds with Swedenberg's visions of heaven in the 1700s which we've talked about and corresponds to near-death experiences from like doctors and completely different um, experiences and experiments going on it's all it's all connected okay but anyway so yeah We'll talk about Bacon Shakespeare um, again soon, because I am part of the Francis Bacon Society now. I pay the yearly membership, and it's totally awesome and an honor. Um, yeah, just trying to you know, connect with people, because everyone's about separating and labeling these days. I'm trying to do the opposite and unite. No wonder Aquarius's main verb is to universalize. Well, take it easy.